Hello, I'm James Preston and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks, exclusive to Kalkine TV. In 2022, it's impossible for a business to excel without a strong digital footprint and clear marketing strategy. One company that understands this to a T is Region Branding, a digital marketing agency founded in 2016. At the core of their branding strategy is the concept of emotional resonance, and to explain exactly what that is, Managing Director Hamza Malik joins me live. Hamza, great to have you here this morning. Thanks for inviting me. Look, lovely to have you here with us. Let's start with that simple question. What exactly is emotional resonance in the world of marketing? Emotional resonance is a term that um, I kind of came up with uh, a couple of years ago. It stems from the point that marketing nowadays has gone to numbers based. It's all about, um, you know, like metrics and ROI and KPI. And I really think that how someone feels is the most important thing in marketing. How did you make your customer feel or your client? Did they smile? Did they scoff? Did they widen their eyes? Did they show a friend? And emotional resonance to me is the best way to grow a campaign because whether we like it or not, specifically with social media, uh, the biggest thing are elicit, you know, it's eliciting what they call instant emotions. Mm. Whether that's on one end of the scale or another, you have to make someone feel something and then that's how your campaign resonates outwards. But ideally it should be something positive because when you're putting something out in the world as a piece of content, uh, you know, you shouldn't go for sort of quick clicks and uh, inflammatory articles. You should try and put something out that helps people. Yeah, it's a really good perspective. I mean, over here in Australia, we've got uh, a few Maccas commercials which have got these sort of bizarre emotional messages behind them, whether it's uh, one old lady who likes to put pickles in her ice cream, for example, and that's a tradition that gets carried on through the generations in a family. And I don't know why, but my partner, every time she sees it, just bursts into tears and I'm like, it's a pickle in an ice cream. But, you know, that's for her to decide herself. But certainly, I take your point about emotional resonance in that respect. Now, in your opinion, what are the most important aspects of a successful digital marketing strategy in a modern world which is fair to say very much increasingly digital yeah absolutely uh, things have gone digital but to me that doesn't mean that our entire thinking has to be digitized so weirdly my entire marketing strategy background comes from psychology so mm. I've read psychology books and that has directly translated into what makes a great marketing strategy so you start off with a customer persona who are you trying to target? What are their pain points? What are their problems? How can you delight them? How can you excite them? But then you've got to humble yourself and understand they don't care about you. They don't care about who you are or what you're selling. They just care about how you can help them. So then you've got to think about what's your value proposition. And a lot of the time I see businesses day in and day out, their value proposition is what they think makes them valuable to themselves. And I'm like, okay, so as a customer off the street, I don't care that you've got a 99.8% response rate in January 2019, <laughs> uh, although they're super proud of it. So it's kind of got to be, what can you do for your customer? How can you reach them? And then through the customer persona, you can be like, well, is that Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Tumblr, Reddit? And sometimes it's nothing to do with social media and it's email marketing, or you can buy space uh, using media planning on other websites, so display marketing as well. And we've even used um, you know, direct mail as well. It still works amazing because if you get a big golden envelope on your, on your mat, you're gonna open it. Uh, there's no way someone just chucks that in the bin without opening it to see what it is. So we kind of blend both of them in something we call omni-channel uh, omni marketing. And that works really well. We're talking a lot about here about getting into the psychology of the consumer itself and also that emotional resonance aspect. Uh, you mentioned their emails. Is it quite difficult to sort of reach that particular point though with an email? I mean, it's, it's kind of just words on a piece of paper essentially. It's not the same as having sort of a, a visual medium or an audio medium where you can, I suppose, use that human emotion. Do you find it's a, a bit more challenging to get that emotional resonance message across in an email, for example? You're right. Um... So if you start off by just like going for the ask in an email, you'll most likely fail because you're right, it's not emotionally charged. Even a video, people will give a couple of seconds because it's interesting and like, you know, 90% of our brain is wired towards visual medium, like it's taking over at the moment. However, uh, at the same time, if you've built a relationship with your customers and you've helped them, then the idea that we, you know, this has worked really well for us, uh, 10 times in a row, we give them value for free. We don't ask for anything. We don't even have a CTA button in the email. We just say, hey, this is something free that we want to give you. Uh, here's a technique, here's a tip, here's a, um, you know, an idea for a strategy that you might want to run. And then we just leave it at that. 
by the tenth time, we kind of want to be that familiar um, sort of, you know, not a, not a friend because companies they shouldn't go towards that, and and it's really painful when they try and do that. But kind of like a, a colleague, kind of like the person at work that you can always rely on for advice. We want to be that person digitally. When you're there, the next thing you say after that, like for example, we'd really appreciate your support. Now it's loaded with emotional resonance、mm. because you've given all that help, or and people want to give back when they've been helped. We're kind of like very kind as a species, but digital marketers forget that because they try and exploit it rather than nurture it. Is there a recent example you can give me about、uh, a campaign that you've worked on where you decided to just throw the numbers away and approach purely from that emotional angle? Uh, yeah, so we worked with、uh, a charity last year, and they'd never done Facebook ads before. And they said, "Right, what's the KPI? What's the ROI? For every three pounds, we need this many donations." And I said, "Okay, well, consider that. You know, assume you're going to get a good ROI because we'll we'll make sure of that.、Um, but let's start with who are you? Like, what kind of charity are you? Why are you in this space?" So we put together some videos about、uh, their past, their founder, kind of work they do. Uh, the patrons, the people that have actually been helped by this charity, into a really nice video. Did a video views campaign, and it had no call to action in it at all. It just、mm. said, "Hey, this is who we are," and we did use data to back that up. So this is people that were either in their database or a lookalike of their database, or people that went to their website and didn't donate. But we just put out that bit of content, and then something else, which was a thank you from the founder himself to say thanks for just you know checking out the charity. Really appreciate it. And then, if anyone watched 90% of both of those videos, then the third one was an ask to say, "Look, we're running a campaign. Here's what it's going to do. Here's where every single penny is going to go to be transparent and coherent." And from that, we generated.、Um, I think we put in, in. In the end, they kind of ended up wanting to spend more and more. So we, we spent about 18,000 pounds on that, and it generated about 270,000. So just over、wow. a million.、Um, but that's because we we led with emotion. And then we used data to back up, you know, just sort of as a litmus test to make sure we're going in the right direction. Now it's an incredible result for that campaign, that's for sure. Now, Hamza, we've also heard a lot about the metaverse in the past six months. Big companies such as Adidas and Nike have, for example, set up virtual stores within the framework of the metaverse. Do you think this is the next frontier for advertising, and how crucial is it to get involved? And is Regent Branding looking at the space themselves? Yeah, we've been looking at it for a while. When people thought it was really nerdy, and、uh, <laughs> we were like, I was checking out the first version of the Oculus and looking at what the next version of advertising could be.、Um, interestingly, I mean, everyone's talking about this now, but like Barack Obama、uh, in 2008,、um, they he he was smart because he knew where the swing states were, and his team purchased advertising in games, so in Madden and Need for Speed. In、Need for Speed. When you're driving by and you see a billboard in the game, it was his ad in the game,、uh, wow. and it it worked a lot because people were like, "It's relevant, it's timely, it's in the game," which is kind of like wacky as well. Now, what the metaverse wants to do, and just as a side note, they've been working on this for like seven years. So you know, like Microsoft and Google and Facebook and Apple, eventually probably they've come out with this just now.、Uh, they started working on this in like 2015, and They already know like what the next three steps are going to be.、Um, we are going to be involved in this. However, we're going to wait for the hardware to catch up because we don't jump into places where the users aren't being served. At the moment, the problem I see with the metaverse is that big thing you've got to put on your head, and like it's, it's kind of heavy, and the graphics aren't great. It's where the internet was in like 1998, super exciting and full of potential. So we want to be part of it, but we're not going to try to monetize it at the moment. We're just going to try and create software and create tools to help push it along. Yeah, it will be interesting to see the next、uh, evolution of the hardware. Potentially, we go from one of those big headsets to something more like、uh, the Google Glasses, for example, where it's just sitting there on the bridge of your nose. Now, I know you've talked about that charity campaign, which worked wonders. But what would you say some of the most exciting digital campaigns that you worked on in 2021 were? We worked on quite a few. It was kind of no one knew it was going to happen because of COVID. Um, but when we started 2021, we kind of it was off with a bang. So we worked with the British Army、uh, in, in early 2021, and then very quickly with Direct Line, who wanted to do like a virtual fair for like that all their employees rather than gather physically. They wanted to do something virtually, and it was like a, a mental health event. But we built kind of like a, a fun fair that you could access from your 
laptop and then you could go to different tents and sort of <laughs> check out what's going on there we partnered with companies to do that um, and then later on in the year we were lucky enough to work with two or three different charities uh, one of them it was super exciting um, different charity than the one mentioned before but we built a tool to help them get donations in just a swipe and a tap so we saw the biggest problem with charity websites is that 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 form at the end that checkout form is so long and so boring um, and like you got to get your card out and get the CVC code. We built a tool in house where you can swipe and tap and it lets you pay by Apple Pay or Google Pay or something called Swipeify. We implemented this on a couple of charity websites and the results were astounding. And that campaign specifically marketing it was super exciting because we had charities that, you know, they generate a couple of thousand pounds a month and suddenly in a week they've done 30,000 pounds all through this little widget sitting on their homepage that we made. Um, so that was very exciting as well. And then we were lucky enough to work with Illy Coffee uh, in the influencer marketing side. And we kind of went to London Coffee Festival. And by the end of that, I was buzzed because I'd like sampled everyone's coffee. Um, but that was an amazing campaign that sort of really proved that if you have the right people in the right place at the right time, uh, digital marketing can be quite enjoyable. Absolutely. Now, Hamza, in the past, Region Branding has been awarded as one of the top digital companies in the UK by Clutch. What would you say makes Region Branding so unique in the market? Um, so, we're different because we're not restricted by location or by um, persona. And what, what I mean by that is, firstly, by location, we hire anywhere. So, we've been fully remote and flexible since day one. So we've cherry picked the best talent from around the world. And, and these guys, like they humble me on a daily basis. So they are the best. Uh, so, you know, if we approach someone and they don't want to be full time with us, they're usually more than happy to be a contractor and, you know, get, get paid generously for a couple of months for a project. But we know that that's the best person in that niche using that framework that we can get at the, at the moment. So we don't have to go out to job boards and pray and hope that someone lives in a five mile radius to our offices. Um, so the team of about sort of 35 now, completely remote, completely flexible in that if you get your job done and it's at a good level and you've managed your time and you don't have any deadlines, then go home. Like enjoy your time. I genuinely want people to enjoy time with their family and friends and follow their hobbies. So, you know, if we're on a tough project, then of course everyone's got to put in the hours and myself included, we're there to late. But, you know, in the time where a job is meant to take three hours and it ends up taking someone one, I'm not going to just make them sit around for two hours. Um, I tell them, look, you know, some of them are in Greece, go to the beach. Some of them are in Spain. It's like, look, just chill out, go outside, go for a walk. Um, so that's what really makes us different. And in terms of persona, um, we've hired people that usually wouldn't get hired at a digital agency. So we're talking about people that are like fresh out of college, huge amount of enthusiasm. Maybe they've tried something in, you know, a little Facebook page here and there. Um, Historically, they, the first thing they say is, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm being invited to an interview because it's tough at the moment and it's very competitive. But I would much rather hire an enthusiastic, passionate, honest person rather than someone who's not that passionate, just there for the money and is like really, really good at coding, whatever it is. Because I can, I can teach and we can support our staff and our, um, our contractors in getting to where they need to be. Um, so it's really about the personality rather than just sort of, you know, are you book smart? Well, look, I know the background is obviously marketing, but you've definitely sold that to me. I might actually have to go about and do a, a bit of a sea change and work remotely for you. I think that <laughs> sounds like a pretty sweet deal. But uh, just before I let you go, Amza, what's the most niche form of marketing that will outshine all others in 2022? Um, you know, that the guy on earlier, who, who was fantastic, um, he mentioned that personal branding is super important and he's completely right. But to me, one channel of marketing that's weirdly overlooked are webinars. So social media marketing, it's saturated. And yeah, TikTok advertising is really cheap at the moment. If anyone hasn't got an advertising campaign on TikTok and their demographic actually lives there, do it tomorrow because it's super cheap. And then you've got your Snapchat and your YouTube and everything. And yeah, that's been around for ages. Webinar marketing, where you can get people virtually in a room and not upsell them, just impart knowledge. And from there you can get their email address or you can invite them to a physical event. Just getting people in a room together, there's something incredibly powerful about like-minded people being in one space. Um, so to me, webinar marketing is absolutely huge. And just as a, a small example, like 
we tested something a little while ago where I have a book on Amazon and I asked a bunch of people in a webinar, like-minded people, all passionate about helping each other. I said, guys, can you all go onto this page? Because I want to test something about Amazon's algorithm. Because we're like-minded and we want to help each other, we had like a few hundred people go to that page. The book jumps to like the top 20 spot in its niche straight away. Huh. That doesn't happen if you do Facebook ads because you've got to pay for every click and it's, it takes ages to learn the campaign. So getting people that are like-minded in one space, they want to help each other, they want to see each other thrive, whether that's a webinar, a closed group, a community, a Slack channel, a Telegram group, that is the best form of marketing because then you don't just have customers, you have brand evangelists and eventually maybe even a few friends as well, which is great. Well, look, free plug opportunity for you as well. What's the name of the book? Uh, the book's called Arius Archer and the Shadow Cloak. So it's a young adult fantasy adventure about a boy whose sister's soul is like ripped out of her body on her 13th <laughs> birthday and he's got to go to the land of Philasia to rescue her. And from there, he sort of learns all sorts of weird and wacky things and there's mystical creatures and fantastical adventures he's got to go on. Uh, if anyone likes like Harry Potter or Narnia or Lord of the Rings or Percy Jackson, uh, they'll really like Arius Archer. I'll tell you what, I really like what you are doing with region branding. Hamza, thank you so much for your time today. You're most welcome. Thank you for yours. Well, that's Hamza Malik, the Managing Director of Region Branding. And if you miss any part of that chat, then just head across to our YouTube channel, Kalkai Media, where you can watch the entire interview. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I'm James Preston, reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with Kalkine.